It's one second, so should we clap? Yeah. Okay, we'll do a clap. So um, I am working on my dissertation, and um, that is, a, it, it's titled right now, Cinema Ecology and the Body Resisted. So the idea being um, that in many mainstream Hollywood films, the body, uh, while there are a lot of films about action and sort of, you know, sex and action and, you know, where you would think the body is involved, um, the way that montage edit or the way that editing has evolved, according to me, and I want to know what you think about this, um, in some ways ends up denying the body. So what is edited out, the, what is edited out is pause, is awkwardness, is process, um, is breath. Um, but I just wonder what you, your initial reaction to that as uh, an idea or a thesis? Well, I, I think you could say the same thing uh, about radio interviews and the voice. Um, because what is almost toxic on radio is dead air. And if somebody pauses uh, in an interview, um, those pauses can be very significant. Uh, but if they last more than a second or two, they get cut out or severely diminished. Or if somebody says, you know, too much during an interview or um, which are indications that they're thinking about what the question is and how best to answer it, those also tend to get cut out. Um, when you, um, when you stand to edit, um, and you've talked about this on, on camera before, but I hope you don't mind me asking <laughs> for, for this piece. Um, when you, when you stand to edit, what does that do for the audience? What does that do for what, what happened on set? What does it do for you as an editor? Mm -hmm. I kind of want to get a sense for this ecology of filmmaking. Yeah. Um, two things. One of them has nothing to do with any of those questions. It's just a healthier way to work. There are many articles online where you can read, your chair is your enemy. And, mm -hmm. you know, people who sit for long periods of time every day have shorter lifespans and less healthy lifespans. So it was something that I, I started doing, uh, I started working standing up back in the mid 60s because you had to do it in those days. The machine required you to do it. Um, and then the machines changed in the 70s, and you could, and you, in fact, were encouraged to sit down. And that's where I felt the emergence of the problem uh, began to have stiffness in the shoulders and back problems. And so I, I rebelled against that in the um, 80s and, and have been re-standing ever since. The, the, the other question, uh, I, you know, there are wonderful editors who do not stand. So I, you know, I, I can't say that, uh, you know, you, you could quantify any of these things. Um, um, I, I think there's something to be said that uh, there's, there's a close linguistic link between kinesthesia and kinematics cinema. Uh, and what I feel when I stand uh, is that I'm standing for the same reason that orchestra conductors stand, or that cooks stand, or that um, uh, surgeons stand. All of those things, and there are many more besides, all of those things are extremely time dependent. You have to flip the egg at a certain moment uh, you have to get the downbeat at a certain moment. You have to snip the artery at a certain moment. You can't, uh, you, you have to harness yourself to the stream of time that is in front of you. And that's a very good 
description of editing. And I, I feel that uh, if you're standing, those rhythms get uh, encoded in more of your body than they do if you're sitting. That if you're sitting, essentially you've turned yourself into a paraplegic um, and the bottom half of your body is just not doing anything. Um, and so if you're standing, you can kind of sway to the movement, you can crouch, you know, there are many more options available to you uh, to, uh, to feel the rhythm.